we are taking up a special offering for Timothy, so we'll take up a regular tithe, and then we'll take up a special offering in, in, in a little bit. And all it is is uh, I told him we've been helping with a plane ticket because um, um, he, he's going to Canada. He's a missionary. Uh, he was here last week, and he said, thank you so much for your church and giving. And I said, hey, uh, what we gave you is what we thought you, you that, that God blessed us, and we gave in abundance to you that week. Uh, but we'll help you specifically with that plane ticket uh, extra. So if the Lord's laid something on your heart, let's do that this morning as well after we sing. Father, to take up this 
night, no service. Remember, um, Wednesday night, where the work flows, and we will uh, move some stuff in the back Wednesday. Friday night is the singing. Saturday morning. What time is Saturday morning? Eight, nine, eleven. What time is Saturday morning? Anybody? Bill or no?
mothers and appreciate all you've done. I know this is not an easy um, Mother's Day for some of us that are here this, this morning, but I tell you this, uh, you say you don't know what it feels like, but I know one thing, the Lord knows, and, and here's the other thing. As we sung that song, I was just thinking we, we all have to just continue to be the example, you know. Can't keep looking back and, and things, but you've got to be the example now. We, you've got to be, and, and I'll tell you, we all got to keep uh, working and doing and, and trying to earn earn that reward for Jesus. Uh, certainly, it's a, a noble fight. But Matthew chapter 20 is where our text will come from. Um, this morning, we didn't take up the change offering this morning, um, but uh, we might do that at the end. I remember uh, to try to take up that change off at the end. Somebody don't let me forget. Matthew chapter number 20. Uh, this morning, just to, to give you what the Lord has laid on our heart, I really prayed about one thing, and the Lord kind of uh, went a different way on us uh, with the text. But we'll be in Matthew chapter number 20. Just want to try to give you what the Lord's laid on our heart here. And uh, the, 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 starting at verse number 20, Matthew 20. And verse number 20. We'll stand for reading God's word. We're going to read um, about eight verses here. It says, And then came to him, Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children, with her sons worshiping him, and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She said unto him, Grant that, that, that these two children, sons may sit one on the right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what you ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. And he said unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of the cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But sit on my right hand and on my left, and it's not mine to give, but it shall be given for, to them whom is prepared of my father. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. And Jesus, But Jesus called them unto him and said, You know that the princes and the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they, they that are great exercise authority upon them, but it shall not be so among you. But whosoever be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever shall be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered to, but to minister and give his life a ransom for many. Let us pray. Your Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for uh, this day, Lord. Thank you again for another opportunity to come out to your house, Lord. We just thank you for our, the, the mothers, the godly women that make up our church, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that <coughs> this message here falls on good ground and it's a help and encouragement. Lord, you just touch us here this morning. Let us just be a willing vessel to be helped and used by you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Bless your sister. The key verse I want to look at this morning is verse number 20. It says, And it came to him, the mother of Zebedee's children, with her sons worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. So we see this is the mother here of James and John. Her name is Salome. Her name is Salome. And it doesn't say her name right here in the text, but her name is Salome. And I want to give just a little bit of background here in this text here this, this morning before, just kind of as a way of introduction before we go to Matthew in chapter number 20. So just as introduction, but we read here in verse number 20, we read of the mother of Zebedee's children. And we read of, them, of, of her being with Mary several times here. And Salome uh, is believed a uh, very poss possibility that she is the sister of Mary, the mother of Jesus. And that means that James and John were cousins of Jesus. And we see this in Mark and we see this in John, uh, those two gospels. And John uh, in John 19 and verse number 25, it says, uh, and, now, and now there stood by the cross Jesus, Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, and then Mary, the wife of Cliffus, and Mary Magdalene. So we see Jesus' mother and then his mother's sister right there 
at the cross. Now Mark is more specific in giving his account. In Mark's account uh, of the gospel, uh, Salome here was at the cross, and during the crucifixion, she was one of the women, one of the women there looking afar off. In Mark 15, verse number 40, it says, And there was also women looking afar off, among whom was Mary Magdalene, and the mother, and Mary, the mother of James, the less, and of Joseph, and Salome. So you see there, she's with those same women, and they're looking upon uh, the crucifixion there of Jesus. But it doesn't end there. We find this same lady here, Salome, that's mentioned here in Matthew 20 and verse number 20. We find it in Mark 16. In Mark 16 and verse number 1, this is after the crucifixion. They found out uh, they, they found out of the resurrection. And in Mark 16 and verse number 1, it says, When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome. So we see that same uh, uh, lady here, this same mother mentioned in Matthew 20 and verse number 20, as she, they brought those spices to anoint him at the resurrection. So there, she, so we see him at see Mary, and we see this uh, uh, this same mother at, at the crucifixion. We see this same mother at the resurrection in the Gospel of Mark. But go back to the text here in Matthew twenty and twenty, and it says, "And then came to him uh, the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him." Uh, so at the cross, Salome was there. At the resurrection, Salome was there, the same uh, lady, believed to be Mary's sister. And these accounts, we can say, uh, can, can I, do you think I'm stretching the word of God to say, with these accounts, she uh, was faithful? I believe she was. If she was there at the cross and then she's there at the resurrection, I believe she's pretty faithful. And I know there's some folks and, and commentators that will take this text and they read this text and, and say that, the, that the, these boys are wanting a part of the kingdom and, and, and it's all about pride and, and she was prideful. I, I, I read that this woman was very faithful, nonetheless. She's very faithful. She, she uh, stood by the Jesus. She was there at the crucifixion. Not everybody was there. Not everybody stayed uh, with him, but she was there. <clears throat> not only there at the crucifixion, but she's there at the resurrection. But I want to look at this, and I want to preach for just a moment on this, and it's a mother's request. We read of her request here in Matthew 20 and 20. We read of her request, and I want to look uh, just a few things, but four things of her request and of this request and of this mother. And how it can really apply to us, I'll be trying to be brief with you. I know you've got a busy day ahead, a lot of us do. But look at verse number 20 again. It says, Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him. I believe this lady, uh, this mother, uh, Salome, she was an example. I believe she is an example. And I believe all mothers, they are an example. Whether it's a good example, whether it's a bad example, all mothers are an example. Tim Howard, he's a former goalkeeper for the U.S. men's national team, and I ran across this quote and he said this, a mother's example sketches the outline of her children's or her child's character. Isn't that the truth? Her example is just the outline or the pattern. I believe it's the door that your children walk through. The same footprints that your children go through. It's the same example of that godly mother's character. I believe that's the truth. Meaning it's so much of who we are, so much of why you're sitting here this morning it's due to the fact uh, that, that, that this mother, is, that, that, that a mother led you in the right direction and was an example for you. So, amen. It's working again. Praise the Lord. Somebody pray, bless you. Amen. Sorry if you were listening online. You didn't miss much. But it is an example. I'm thankful for the example that a mother made and a mother laid on her. The example of a mother, I'm just so thankful for that. But in there, our text, this mother's name is Salome. And I really believe by looking back at the introduction, she was at Jesus' crucifixion. She was there after the resurrection. And I really believe that she had um, the right heart and her heart was in the right place. And I believe she wanted her children to have the best, don't you? I believe that was her example because she was right there with Jesus. 
And you say, well, how do you know that? Well, I'll read here in verse number 20. Then came to her to him, the mother of Zebedee's children, with her sons worshiping him. Meaning Salome wanted to be that example. And any mother ought to want to be that example. And she came worshiping him. I don't read this. I don't read that she sent her sons. You know, there's some, some, some mothers that will send their children to church and say that's, a, that's good enough. No, you don't want to send them. You want to be the example and go with them. And, and she was there worshiping. But I don't read that someone else took her sons. I don't read that. I, I, don't re I read right here in verse number 20 that, that, that the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons was worshiping him. So the very best a mother can do, the very best that any uh, father, mother, anybody can do is desire Jesus for their children. Amen. That's the very best that we do. That's, the, that's what we ought to do. And she was that example. Reminds me in Psalm 127, verse number 3, it says, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. I think we're, we so often underestimate the, the uh, importance of children and how they are his heritage. And, and that it's a reward to have these children. And, and it's a heritage of the Lord. And, and we've got to be the example. And we've got to lead them in the right, right way. These children are a gift of God. His reward. And a mother, the least a mother can do is be the example. And I read that in verse number 20. So number one, I see the example. She's not just an example. I believe she had an expectation. Look at her expectation. It says uh, she was with her sons worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. Let me just say this. It's a good thing to desire something of the Lord. I believe it's a good thing to pray and, and, and constantly seek the Lord's face and desire something for him. A mother needs to be an example, but a mother needs to have expectations uh, for the Lord, but an expectation for her children, because look at verse number 21. It says, and he said to her, what, uh, what wilt thou? She said to him, grant that, grant that these two sons may sit one on the right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. So this mother had an expectation, but her expectation was for the Lord, amen. That's a good place to have an expectation. But she had an expectation for her children. I'm telling you, any good mother is going to have an expectation for her children. They're going to want the very best. Well, she's going to be the example, but I'm telling you this, there comes a time where you can only be so much of an example. Your children have to make the, 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 the uh, decisions for themselves. You're sitting here this morning and you're upset over decisions that your children have made. All you can do is be the example. Be the example as far as you can go, but then your children have to make their examples, the, the, the decisions on them, their own. You just have to be the example. But not only that, you've got to have an expectation. Expect the Lord to do something. Expect Him to do something in your life, but expect Him to do something for your children. And I read here, verse number 20 at the end, she's desiring a certain thing of Him. Jesus, I truly believe this morning, desires us uh, to, to, He wants us to desire certain things of Him. In other words, you, you ought to desire for your children to be saved. I really believe that. <coughs> Every mother ought at one time or another pray that her, that her children are saved. Not only that, but I believe every mother ought to pray that, that, that her children are that not just saved. It's not just a check to get to heaven, but have the fruit of salvation and, 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 and have a, a, a calling on their life. That ought to be and used of the Lord. And we ought to have that expectation. So she desires this certain thing. She's got this expectation, but I believe she's expecting and desiring great things of her children. In verse number 21, it says, Grant that these two sons may sit, one on the right hand and the other on the left, in thy kingdom. Saying she had an expectation. She expected some things. You can say that's pride, but I believe she just wanted, I, I, I'm just taking the Bible at what it says. She just wants them to be the head of the kingdom. I'm telling you this. Here in 2023, I'm not wanting Harper to, 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 to be the best singer for her. But for the Lord, I want her to be the best singer that she 
she possibly couldn't compete for the Lord. I want her, I want to have that expectation. But I want to pray through it through the Lord that he gets the blessing, that, that he touches her voice, that he touches her heart, he touches her life, and she does it for him. I don't think that's a bad thing to pray this morning to expect your child and have an expectation for your child to want, to desire, to have a place uh, to serve the Lord. Maybe in rulership, there's only but one rule. Maybe that shouldn't be. But at the same time, I do want to have an expectation from a child. I was thinking about these boys that just surrendered to the call to preach. You just think about that. I, I believe every one of us ought to be saturating them with so much prayer and that, that, they, that the, the word ought to come easy, uh, messages ought to come easy. We ought to have an expectation, an expectation that, that the Lord uses these, these boys. But I'm telling you this, there's so many when it comes to expectation. I'm telling you, I work in the school system, and, 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 and some of you have worked in social work. There's so many that do not have that expectation. They don't have that desire. They don't have the example for the children, but they don't have an expectation for the children. That happens so often. They ain't expecting God to do nothing. They're not desiring the Lord to do nothing. Uh, for their children. I think there's many uh, mothers, because anybody can be a mother but uh, or have a child, but to be a real mother, you've got, to, uh, you've got to care for your children. But I think there's so many mothers in this day that it's, it's about them. They'll hand their child a device or a cell phone, send them on their way, and, and they just worry about themselves so often. I think so many, uh, they, they, they care solely for themselves, but some of them just don't even have a care for themselves. In other words, if they don't care for themselves, they're not going to care for their child. They're not going to have a high expectation for their child. But in this text, I believe the, the mother has a genuine expectation for her children, and, and she's doing what a lot of parents do. She's doing striving and doing whatever it takes to uh, talk to the Lord here to grant my sons. Uh, to, 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 to sit on the kingdom. And, and I know that's probably not the best thing to be asking is, is for them to be at a place of rulership or a place of power. But I think to put it from our perspective in 2023, 20, uh, just expect God to do something for your children. Expect Him to be used. They don't have to sit on the throne. They're not going to sit on the throne. But, they're, but expect them to be used of Him. I like what the Butler commentary says. It says many mothers and fathers in every age have caused many problems by trying to get their children in high position. They push and shove and pull strings to get their children into prestigious schools or jobs or other positions of esteem. They need to instead be uh, earnest about their children's character, that character is more important than the position. I like what that said about that. So I'm seeing here, number one, that mother is an example. But number two, that mother has an expectation. An expectation of Jesus, but an expectation that they're, that, the, that they're used of Jesus. What we need to be praying for. Not that they're side by side. Not that they're up on the throne. Not that they're ruling. Not that they're better than anybody. But have an expectation. <coughs> Here's the next step. I see the example. I see the expectation. But now I see the encounter. She encounters the Lord here, and, and he answers her. So what's verse 22 says? Jesus answered. When he answers, look what he said. You know not what you ask. We're looking at a mother's request this morning, and Salome is this mother. She makes a request for the Lord, and, and based on uh, just her being with Jesus at the crucifixion and her being with Jesus at the resurrection, uh, we, we can see that she's... she's uh, got this faith and trust in the Lord and it seems like her heart is in the right place so she is this example and she is this example and she is this uh, also this encounter that she takes place with the Lord. She's got this example she's got this expectation but then there's this encounter. But let me just say so often you think things have to be a certain way but then when you encounter the Lord the Lord says it a little different the Lord gives it to you a little different in other words, but Jesus answered. So Jesus answered, and he, he, his answer comes from her expectation. Again, her expectation is them to sit on the throne and for them to be on the right and one on the left in the kingdom. Being a part of the kingdom is not a, uh, a, is a is an okay thing to be in prayer for. For them to 
work and in service for the Lord, that's a, an okay thing. But when she encounters the Lord, he says, you know not what you ask. We think that we know what we need. Let me just say this. This morning, you may have come in and said, well, he's going to preach to mothers. I'm not a mother. And, and he thought he was just going to check a box and go to the house. But so often the Lord will speak to us and the Lord will say something to us and we think we know what we need, but the Lord really knows what we need. You know, you know what I'm saying? You may have went to revival meeting different nights of the week, the last couple of weeks, but uh, when we was in revival and, and thought, well, uh, I, you thought you needed one thing and the Lord will tell you you needed something different. But what this is, it's really an encounter. An encounter is an unexpected experience to be faced with something difficult or hostile. It's, 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 some, it's just an unexpected experience. So Jesus, they, she didn't expect Jesus to say, you don't know what you're asking. You know what I'm saying? She wants a place of rulership for her children. She wants her, her children to be as close to Jesus as possible. But you don't know what you're asking. She's not expecting. There's some of you this morning that are wanting to draw closer to the Lord. And I've seen him work in your lives over the past uh, few months. But let me just say this. When you say, I want to be close to Jesus, and you want to be used to Jesus, he's saying the same thing. You don't know what you're asking. You don't know what you're getting into. And, and he goes on to say in verse number 22, look what he says. He says, are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of? and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. And they say unto him, we are able. So Jesus asks, are you able? And their response is, yeah, we're able. It's like they heard it, but I don't think they really understood what Jesus is talking about. Because see, this cup that he's talking about, it's the cup of suffering, Greg. It's not an easy cup. But that's the cup he's talking about. You're going to have to drink of my cup. You're going to have to suffer for my sake. If you want a place of rulership, you want a place of reward, you want to be used of Christ, you're going to have to sacrifice and, and crucify the flesh daily. That's not easy. You're going to have to suffer. You're going to have to give up some things. But he talks about baptism too in verse number 23. He's speaking of that immersion of water, but he's talking about being immersed with the sorrows, the suffering, and the pain of this world. He had to take it all in. See, here's the thing. We all want to draw close to Jesus, but we often don't want to give up what it takes to get close to Jesus. And I know it's the mothers, but this is everybody here this morning, this part. <coughs> if we want an encounter, and we want God to draw close to us, you better be careful of, of, of how what we're asking. He says it's a cup. You're going to have to drink of that cup, and you're going to have to be baptized with that same baptism. So she encounters Jesus. We see an example. She is this example. We see the expectation. She's expecting this place of rulership. But she encounters the Lord. And when she encounters the Lord, he says in verse number 20, you're not, you know not what you ask. You don't even know what you're asking. The last thing I see this morning is experience. It all comes down to experience. And, and what a mother has is she has these intentions for her son. And let me say this, we all, we all have the best intentions for our children. We want the very best. We want the best education. We want the best a husband or spouse for our children. We want the best life for our children. We want the best relationship with Jesus to be at the best church, doing the very best. It hurts us to think about our child suffering in any regard. But she's putting them first, and we've seen that she put in the introduction that she put Jesus first, but how many of you know that you're not going to learn the lessons you need to learn until you go through experiences of life? You have to face some things, and that's what Jesus is truly trying to say to her, I believe, because in verse number 21, her request is grant these two sons to sit one on the right and the other on the left in the kingdom. The commentators say this is pride, but that whether or not it's pride or whether it's not, whether she's just wanting them to be as close to Jesus and, and be right with him in the kingdom, uh, 
That's her heart, and I'm not going to say uh, that I know that uh, they can't rule with Jesus, but I do know that in 2023, we need to have this to be an example, and we need to uh, desire our children to be uh, as close to the Lord as possible in these days. And we do that by being the example. But I believe we ought to have the expectation of the very best. I think in every good mother, and use quotations, if you're a good mother, you ought to want the very best for your children. You ought to. You ought to want the very best. Uh, in other words, the problem is, though, uh, we don't understand there's an experience that we have to go through to be the very best. We don't wake up and the Lord just say, yep, we have to go through some things. We have to face some things. In verse number 24, it says, And the ten heard it, and they were moved with in indignation against the two brethren. In other words, these two, there was these murmurings. There's these an animosities in amongst the crowd. They, they, they heard this, and, and it says that they were moved against these two brethren. So how could a mother's request uh, uh, be for the best in rulership of the kingdom. Uh, the problem is, is, is not the expectation. I believe we all ought to expect to do the best. We ought to desire to do the best. But I want you to think about it just a minute. Again, I go back to Harper. I pray the Lord uses her. I pray she grows in the Lord, and I pray that she does the very best for the Lord. I believe. The, I pray the Lord touches her. I, I pray the Lord opens doors for her to sing. I, I just pray for that, and I desire that. But that's what we're called to do. We're called to serve the Lord. The voice that's been called to preach, I desire the very best for them. Each and every one of you, I desire the very best for all of us. I do. I want you to be as close to God and close to Jesus as possible. That's, that's my desire. I, I, I'm very similar to what she's saying in a way, is grant them to be as close to you as possible. And I know maybe pride that they could be the number one. But that's what a parent does. A, parent, a good mother wants their children to be number one. They do. And I'm telling you, still in 2023, that's a part of just being a parent, being a mother, is wanting them to be the very best. We just want them to. There's nothing wrong with the best, wanting the best for ourselves. There's nothing wrong with wanting the best for the ones we love. There's nothing wrong with wanting the best uh, trying to be the best that we can while we're here on this earth. But here's what we don't understand. We don't understand that with being the best comes experience. And that's where I want to end this morning, is look at this experience. <clears throat> In verse number 25, it says, Ye know that the princes and the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, that they have great exercise um, authority upon them. But it shall not be among you. But whosoever shall be great among you, let him be your minister. I see, number one, to, 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 to be the very best that we possibly can be and to and receive this mother's request, he says, you're going to have to be a minister. You're going to have to minister. That's not easy to be a minister. That's not easy. The word minister comes from the, the Greek word uh, Diakonos, and the root word is diako, that means run errands, an attendant, or a servant. There ain't nobody likes to be told what to do. Hey, go do this. Go be a servant. That's what it says. It's where we get our word for deacon. And the ministry means to simply serve. It means to be a servant. In other words, you want this place. You want to be right here with Jesus. Well, there's this experience that's going to have to happen and you're going to have to minister. He was a minister. And if you want to, and he ministered to this whole world. He gave his life for this whole world. And if, and if, if you want to be close to him, you want your children to be close to him, pray that they minister to others. If you desire them to be great, let them minister to others. Again, there's this experience that has to take place. But look at what else he says in verse number 27. And who's Whoever will be chief among, among you, let him be your servant. The word servant comes from a Greek word doulos, meaning a slave. A slave or a servant to him. And they say, preacher, I don't want to be no slave. We got the pretty good end of the deal. We don't have to go to hell. All we got to do is serve him. Pretty good end of the stick, if you ask me. 
We ought to want to serve. We ought to want to do all that we can for you. We ought to want to be in subjection to you. So see, we see, he says you've got to be a minister and you're going to have to be a servant. You've got to put both of those together if you want to be great. And that's what he's saying. But look at verse number 28. Verse number 28, it says, And even as the Son of Man, and wait, 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 Jesus wasn't no better than you. He came in the form of a servant. He was uh, God in the flesh. He was. He came to this earth, just like we've been looking at in Sunday school. Romans 5. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered to, but to minister. What a thought that we came not to get something for us, but we came to minister to others. He says, you want authority, you want dominion, you want... Your, your child to be the very best that it possibly can be. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to have to lay your life down so somebody else can live. It says, but to minister and gave his life ransom for many. That's exactly what Jesus did. Philippians 2, 7 says he made himself to be the form of a servant. Philippians 2, 8, he became a man. He humbled himself. He, he died the death, even the death of the cross. That's what he did. And if Jesus did it, he expects us to do it. He does. He left heaven. He made himself no reputation. He gave up his life so that you and I can live. And what an example that truly is. <coughs> we pray again. We pray that these young children as a whole are used of God. But before we can be used in a mighty, mighty, powerful way and to be right there with Jesus, Is you have to subject yourself. You have to minister. You have to serve. You have to lay down your life before you get to that place. Even here as a pastor, going through closed door after closed door, they were really open door. I've even just churches just said, hey, 100%. The Lord would say no. Go somewhere else. You think this is the one? The Lord would say no. I, I think that happened maybe four or five times. And, and, and you, you just have to look, subject yourself. You have to give yourself to the Lord. Lay your life down to Him and say, Lord, I'm yours. I'm the, I'm the clay. You're the potter. Make me and use me how you want me. Then He says, Okay, now you're. Sometimes we have to be broke. And sometimes we have to subject ourselves and lower ourselves just like he did. And I think for some reason we think that somehow Jesus did it, but we don't have to. Does it make sense this morning? I truly believe that he gave up everything. We've got to give up everything. To hear this Mother's Day 2023, we looked at this mother named Salome. In verse number 20, she came. That's the mothers of these children, Sloan. She came with her sons, worshiping him, and she's desiring something for him. I wonder if Gary can just come out to the piano or replay something softly here this morning. She's desiring something. I just wonder, just based on this message this morning, I just wonder how it may have spoke to you this morning, something may be said throughout this message. I wonder, are you the example that you need to be? Maybe you're a mother. Maybe you're a father, and you just may need to pray that we are the example. It's God first like he was in Salome's life. You're there at the crucifixion. She's there at the resurrection. You have an expectation that God does something. Are you expecting God to do something? I'm telling you this, harpers and dance. He is, aren't you? But my prayer as a father is not for her to be the best dancer. I want her to be a good dancer. I want her to be the best at whatever she does. But above the ball, above school, and I, I'm a teacher. I want her to do good in school. I want her to make straight. But above all that, it's got to be Jesus. I just wonder, maybe you're sitting here where you're at, and you say, Preacher, I need to desire 
the Lord and have an expectation of the Lord to use my child, to use my grandchildren. Maybe this morning you just want to pray and say, hey, I want to be that example, but not only example, I want to have that expectation that she had. An expectation that only comes to the Lord. Nothing that they've done, but all what He can do with them. Maybe you're sitting here this morning, you've had this encounter with the Lord. He, he showed up and He's knocking on your heart. He says, hey, better be that example. Better be that example. Being a mother is an important thing. It's a valuable thing. Maybe it's the experience. Maybe you just want to pray that we minister, we serve, that we give our life for rescue. Heads bowed.